In this video, I'm going to show you another example of how to find the area between two curves. Find the area of the region bounded by the graphs of f of x equals 2 minus x squared and g of x equals x. Again, I've taken the liberty to sketch these graphs ahead of time, so they're already up on the screen for us. The first one, f of x equals 2 minus x squared, can be thought of as y equals negative x squared plus 2. This is a parabola shifted two units up and turned upside down. And I've drawn that for you over here. The second curve is just y equals x, or the identity function. My objective is to sketch these, which I've done, and clearly identify which curve is on top and which curve is on the bottom. Well, clearly the red curve, or the parabola, is on top, and the line is on the bottom. What I'm looking for is the area of the region in between. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a representative rectangle, which is a rectangle that connects the top curve to the bottom curve. Now, when I go to set this up, we're going to run into a little bit of a problem, and that's going to happen right in the beginning. According to the formula at the top left, the area of the region between these two curves is going to be the definite integral of the top curve, and the top curve is the parabola, or 2 minus x squared, minus the bottom curve. Now my representative rectangle is perpendicular to the x-axis, and because it's perpendicular to the x-axis, I know this is a dx problem. And because it's a dx problem, that means my lower limit of integration is going to be my low x, and my upper limit is going to be my high x. Unfortunately, I don't know where those points are. I don't know the lowest x and I don't know the highest x. To figure this out, I have to see where these two curves cross. And we can do this by setting the two functions equally to, equal to each other. If y equals negative x squared plus 2 and y also equals x, we can simply say that negative x squared plus 2 equals x. Now I'm recognizing this to be a quadratic, and to solve a quadratic we need to set everything equal to zero. Fortunately it's factorable, and I end up setting each factor equal to zero to get x equals negative two, or x equals one. When I look over at the graph, these two answers that I got are very reasonable. Our negative two is our low x, and x equals one is our high x. And that gives us our boundaries for our limits of integration. So this is negative 2, and this is 1. Now I'll clean up. Cleaning this up, I'm going to end up getting negative x squared minus x plus 2. Doing the integration, we'll get negative 1 third x cubed minus 1 half x squared plus 2x. And this expression will have to be evaluated from negative 2 to 1. Okay, and I think I'm going to stop here and just let you figure that out how to do that. But one thing I will show you how to do, once again, is how to check this on the calculator. Okay, the calculator's on. I'm going to enter the top function under my y1, which is the quadratic, or 2 minus x squared. The bottom function, as I scroll down to y sub 2, is going to be just y equals x. I'll do a quick sketch to see if that's what we had sketched over there, and it is. And I just want to show you that we can find those same points of intersection using the calculator. Finding the one on the left, second, trace, option 5 is intersect move the cursor over to that leftmost intersection point and press enter three times. And you'll see that I'm getting an x value of negative two, which is exactly what I got when I did it by hand. Repeating the process for the rightmost intersection point, second, trace, five, I can move the cursor over here, press enter three times, and it tells us that the intersection is at one, which is also what I got. 
So we, at this point in time, we've confirmed that our upper and lower limits of integration are correct. Now I'm going to use the integration feature of the calculator to do the actual problem. So I'm going to go to the home screen and I'm going to use math option 9, which is integration. And I'm going to integrate this time from negative 2 to 1. And it's going to be the top curve, which is y1, minus the bottom curve, which is y2. And I'm going to integrate with respect to x. And when I do this, I get an answer of 4.5. So what made this video a little bit different than the first one is the fact that we did not know our upper and lower limits of integration. And to, to find that out, I showed you that we could use our calculator and use second trace 5 intersect, or we could just simply set the two curves equal to, equal to each other.